Michael Brantley being back is good for the Astros from this perspective. You need some outfield depth, and assuming that he can come back from a shoulder surgery that he has already had before, it's a pretty good piece, especially considering the lack of depth in the Astros' outfield at the end of last year. You would assume that Brantley resumes his role in left field, that he alternates from time to time with Jordan Alvarez in left field. I doubt that Michael Brantley is going to be moved into center field. That seems like right now it's Chaz McCormick's to hold on to. I think there are some Astro minor leaguers who might be up at the end of next year who could potentially challenge McCormick or whoever else for that center field spot. But it does feel like the Astros are pretty close to done when it comes to the moves that they're going to make this offseason. And to go back to what Michael Brantley has been through before, for the right shoulder discomfort that put him on the injured list on June 28th, but then required season-ending surgery like a month plus later, an arthroscopic label repair, whatever that means. I don't look at this Brantley and feel like the Astros' outfield issues are in the past. I think it's great that they have a left-handed bat back. I think that if Michael Brantley is healthy, wonderful. He is 35 years old. Relying, I think, on Michael Brantley to be the same player that he used to be, you can do that, sure, but I look at Michael Brantley the same way that I would look at Yuli Gurriel if the Astros were to bring him back, in that I don't think you should be looking at that guy as somebody to rely on 140 games a, day, a season or 130 or 120 games a season, you know? But anyway, it's nice that they brought him back, right? So, since the Astros are probably done, a lot of the names, the big names, like Wilson Contreras, Brandon Nimmo, and um, uh, Andrew Benintendi, others, that they were supposedly in on the sweepstakes for, the Astros didn't get them. So, when we look back at this Astros offseason, how are we going to grade it? And this is where I have a bone to pick with you. And look. You all know I like the Astros. I have jumped on the bandwagon. I believe they are the best run team in town, even with the issues that they maybe have in their front office with Jeff Bagwell, perhaps having a little bit too much input on what they do. I'll be honest. I'm just a little skeptical about Jeff Bagwell. Maybe there's a little bit too much of an old school mindset. I'm not saying James Click was a great general manager by any means, but it is kind of weird the way that it all ended. I think that we should be fair when we grade what the Astros do. And we have high standards here, right? At least I thought we did. But then I saw a couple of polls and questions asked over the weekend. Uh, Larry, the GM, popular follow on Astros Twitter, asked this question. So far, have the Astros gotten better or worse? They added Jose Abreu, but they lost Justin Verlander. They lost Christian Vasquez. They lost Mancini. They do have Brantley back. You don't know what's going to happen with Gurriel. Aledmus Diaz gone. Are they better or worse? 50.7% of people said that they are better. So it's right down the middle. Are they better? Adding Jose Abreu was great. Losing Verlander, doesn't that make it a wash as far as Will the Astros be a better baseball team next season after winning, what, 106 games, the second most in franchise history? Are they a better team in a season where they're going to be playing less games against the American League West next year? Are they better? No, they're not. I, I, this, is, this is an obvious answer, guys. And it's not to say that, oh, they're a disaster, which I think is how some people will interpret you answering, hey, they're not better. They'll say, like, oh, you think they're bad? No, I don't. But are you expecting them to get 106 wins in the regular season next year? And I had some person respond to me saying, well, championships are all that matters. But the question was, are they better or worse? They are slightly worse. Slightly worse. No shame in that. They could probably still get them a World Series. But it's a weird amount of they can do no wrong cultism going on right now. And I get it. Over the last six years, what have you had to legitimately criticize? Maybe the Roberto Osuna trade? But what has there been to point at and say, that was terrible. That was a bad job. They should not have let player X, Y, or Z walk. It hasn't happened.
But let's also be honest with how we grade this team. And let's also be honest about what is taking place right in front of us. The Astros are not a better team than they were last year. So that's one of the things that I saw. Then, from Michael Schwab, I saw this. And this was today's Paul Gallant Show question, which you can answer yourself. At Gallant says on Twitter. How would you grade the Astros offseason so far? And Brantley, excuse me, Schwab did the same thing. Uh, Gain, Jose Abreu, Michael Brantley, Rafael Montero. Let's also remember, the Rafael Montero contract was a stupid contract. Can't tell me otherwise. Also, can we call them Gain when, like, they're on the team last year? Montero and Brantley? Yeah, I agree. Like, they didn't add them. They, it's maintained. They it's they not Gain. They not subtract them. Right. All coaches are still on the coaching staff. Okay. They added Dusty Baker. Right. But again, look, I, I, those are semantics with how Schwab put it out there. Read the rest of Schwab's post. Lose Verlander Vasquez. Can you guess what the average grade was for the Astros offseason? Because the, the, the things that you could pick, A, B, C, or D slash F. Was it a B? 56% of people said B. What are you doing? This is the participation trophy generation foisting its way into baseball conversation. You're giving this offseason a B? That means it was good. Are we calling this a good offseason? And again, it's not the end of the world if it's not a good offseason. But less, we are baseball savants here in Houston, right? We know what good baseball is. This offseason has not been good. 36.7% of people, Sean Mapes, gave the Astros offseason grade an A. So we're talking, if we do a little math here, 56 plus 36.7%. 92.7% of people think the Astros had a good or great offseason where they lost Justin Verlander. You are on crack if you feel that way. And sorry to be so blunt, but some of us, I don't know, actually had people who held them accountable when they were growing up. When I got A-minuses, which I regularly got, being the smart pa smarty pants that I am, I was told that that's not good enough. But I know what the value of a 91 or a 92 is compared to a 93, 94, 95. What are you on when you think that the Astros, who I guess at best have maintained adding Jose Abreu, and lost in Justin Verlander, you were giving this team an 84% on this, on this offseason assignment? And this is like the same stuff that I see with blog posts where people will grade a draft, and everyone's always so afraid to give a C. C is for satisfactory, and C is the grade that you should give this Astros offseason. A C, and that's not bad. But a B? I suppose this is semantics. I just think that you guys are losing your minds a little bit. It's been a great six-year run. They will probably be in the American League Championship Series again this season. Saying that the Astros' offseason has not been as good as you would like is not the end of the world. But it hasn't been as good as we, as we would like, no? Where have they upgraded? Jose Abreu. That's it. Rafael Montero contract was a bad contract. It is. Oh, but Paul, look at his numbers. We all watch the games. Do you feel good with Rafael Montero out there? But even, like, even with the, like, yeah, they brought back Rafael. They lost the Cy Young winner. Exactly. <laughs> they, they lost the Cy Young winning pitcher. So that has to negate Abreu. Unless, uh, I was going to say Brian Abreu. Him, him too. One of the Abreus wins MVP or wins the Cy Young. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? They brought back Michael Brantley. I hope he's 100% this season. Do you know he's going to be 100%? <coughs> That's what I don't get. We don't know what Michael Brantley's going to be this year. It's good to bring him back in, but you paid him $12 million when I think there are real questions about his shoulder. What's it going to be like in the outfield coming back from this? And you guys gave him a B. I I I'm sorry. Like, What kind of school did you guys go to? I, I know. It's, it's the cake eater who only went to private schools growing up. That's asking this question. Shawcrest Preparatory School, their academy. But still, guys, this is not a B. 
96% of people, excuse me, 92.6% of people gave the Astros a B or an A for the offseason or said that they got better this offseason. I'm sorry. That's just stupid. That is not how this works. So can you explain this to me? A B? A B is fair? Yeah, I guess if you're going to like a crap school that just gives everybody Bs because they want them all to leave. Sorry, we don't want to have a 17-year-old in eighth grade. Like, uh, please explain this to me. You guys are way too optimistic about what they have done. And again, the results are the results. We'll see what happens this coming season. I am sure they'll be in the ALCS one more time. But don't tell me they got better this offseason. And don't tell me that they got an A for this offseason, you crazy pants. A couple of texts on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston in response to me saying, you guys are crazy to say that, one, the Astros got an A or a B for their offseason, and two, that the Astros might be better than they were last year. Yes, they added Jose Abreu. They also lost Justin Verlander. And if we're talking about win totals for this coming season, I think that's a best way to judge whether or not the team is better, worse, or the same. The odds of them getting 106 plus wins when they're not playing as many American League West teams and without Justin Verlander pitching on another worldly level, the odds are lower that you will have 106 wins this coming season. And to say that this is a B offseason or an A offseason, like, I'm sorry, I just don't feel like you understand how grades work. Some text, 713-780-3776. By your logic, do you know Verlander is for sure going to be Cy Young Verlander? No. L. Well, why would I expect him to not be what we saw last year? What, because he pitched poorly in the postseason? He's going to be terrible next season? I would imagine he will pitch pretty well. I imagine that he will be missed. You got to figure out between Urquidy, Garcia, and I guess Hunter Brown, if one of those guys is capable of being that dominant. And the odds are probably no, because we're talking about one of the best pitchers ever. They lost him. So you get a little bit worse on that department. You did out Jose Abreu. I get it. Another text. A B rating is the correct rating. What more do you want them to do? The guy's got an MVP first baseman. But that's, that's all they did. That's all they did. The outfield depth is a problem. The amount of right-handed bats in the lineup is a problem. 713-780-3776. Looks like I kicked the hornet's nest out there. We got Mark leading off on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. Mark, what's up? How you doing? Well, you asked for someone to explain it, so I'm going to explain it. The Astros won the championship in any sport. When you win the championship, your goal the next year in the offseason, in the offseason, is not to hemorrhage all your talent. You have your guys bashing in on the ring. They're, they're chasing money and whatever. Now, the Astros lost Justin Verlander. They lost the Peyton Manning of baseball. They lost the regular season dominator who has had, you would have to admit, a, a very disappointing and actually quite lousy postseason pitching record mm -hmm. as an aging pitcher. The Astros, if they replace Justin Verlander with a 500 pitcher, an average pitcher who pitches average in the postseason, the Astros roster is going to make the postseason, and they would actually be a better team. But but see, here's it's the problem, Mark, with the better team part. Because you're going to be relying in more crunch time situations on either Jose Arquiti, who does have good World Series numbers on his resume, or Luis Garcia, or Hunter Brown. And I get it. Verlander's had postseason issues. But are we to believe that just because Verlander's been as bad as he's been in the postseason, that any of those guys stepping in are definitely going to be better? especially when we're just comparing what Verlander is compared to those three guys. Resumes in the regular season, I also think are important. And if we are talking about a team being better next year, shouldn't we be looking at the regular season win total at the end of this too? And I think that without Verlander, you're probably going to lose a couple more games, which again, it's not the end of the world. But if we're talking about this being a successful offseason, that's when you give a team an A or a B. I think it's been C. It's been satisfactory. Nothing wrong with being satisfactory, by the way. I feel like they're... A and B grade means that they got significantly better in doing that. And adding a Bray was great, an MVP guy at first base. But I don't think that it has dramatically vaulted you to another playing field. And I, I think that's why you're giving out an A, definitely, let alone a B. 
appreciate the phone call from Mark. 713-780-3776 to call in, to text in as well. I, I just don't get the grading. I don't. Maybe this is a me thing. Gary's up next. 713-780-3776. What's going on? Yes, yes. Thanks for taking my, thanks for taking my call. Yes, it is a you. It is a you deal. I, I mean, like you say, you're getting the text and the call, and we all got a good pulse on it. You said they got that grade, that A, that MVP guy. Berlander, it's just like the Tom Brady effect. Eventually, you age out. And pitching is more taxing than, I mean, than throwing a football with besides the contact sport. But, I mean, at some point, Jetson is bound to decline. And if we're doing the if factor on one side, we can do the if factor with, on Jetson Verlander this year. We don't know what he's going to be. I just know that I trust the guys in that room, the coaches, the managers and all, who know the game, who have a pulse of it. And I think the sensationalism of you, 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 want, them to, you want everybody to go agree with your C. No, that's you. you. Everybody has their opinion. But the A and a B, they, they're, they're spot on. They, Great, they, Gary, they, it's weak grading. It is weak grading. Right. It, is, it is participation trophy generation stuff. It, it's weak grading. It's satisfactory is fine. Like, that wouldn't be an issue. But A or B means that they are significantly better. You mentioned with Verlander, too, like you brought yeah. up Tom Brady. Where do you think the Patriots would like to be after the worst play in NFL history? Do you think that they would still like to have Tom Brady where they gave up on him, what, like four oh, years ago? Tom Brady is struggling. Not the struggling Tom Brady this year. Oh, okay. Even Three years Brady later, though, this year, Gary. He would be struggling. Three years later, though. Like, he would be struggling. He, I, I, he, he probably would be, but I think they would have liked the Super Bowl that he won the year after he left. No, no. Oh, yeah, but the age. Oh, that's the year after he left. We're talking about this uh, yeah, but Berlander's the three years older. It's, it, it, like, yeah, imagine, yeah, imagine, yeah. Gary. Hang on, hang on. I'll let, I'll let you finish. But you're letting okay, Verlander you. walk to a team that you could potentially yeah. play in the World Series. And hey, look, maybe you get to face him and you get to do all the things that all these teams seem to do against okay. Justin Verlander okay. in the playoffs. But got, at the same time, you. hang on, hang on, Gary. You. Let me finish. Let me finish. At okay. the same okay. time, okay. moving on from Verlander means that one of those three guys is going to step into a bigger role during the regular season. He's going to be relied on more. He's going to have more appearances. And in a season where you're playing less American League West teams, the odds of you having 106 wins or more are lower. And I feel like if we're going to give the Astros an A or a B, we're saying that the Astros are going to be better than they were this past season or maintain 106 wins. And, I, I, you know, 106 wins is a lot to ask for any team in baseball history. That's something the Astros have only done one other time. It was 2019 where they won 108. Like, that's why I'm looking at it from this perspective. So I'm just giving them a C, but I get mad with the A and the B grades because I, I feel like we're being too generous. Anyway, Gary, you can continue. I'll cap it off. I'm not looking for 106 wins. I know, and you said earlier, you're saying that I think they're going to be in the LCS again. Well, if you give me that, you are still a great team in baseball. The wins, whether you get 106 or you get 95 and get in the playoffs, you have the dominant team. You've been there and done that. And so if you're telling me I don't think they're going to get 106 wins, who cares? But on the other hand, you're saying I think they're going to be where they need to be. I will take that, and everybody in Houston will take that again, my man. Okay. I appreciate the phone call, Gary. And we all will take it. I'm just saying I'm looking at these grades right now, and I think that everyone's being not as critical as they should be. Just because we love this team and we, for the most part, trust everything they're doing, though I think healthy skepticism is warranted when it comes to the front office, I feel like because we're a city like this, we have a higher standard. And to say that they had an A offseason is bleeping crazy. To say they had a B offseason, I think, is a stretch. Yes, the standard has to be, did they get better? Not, are they still good? Right. Did they get uh, six asking. wins and a World Series win? Are they better now? That's the standard. Uh, uh, Cy Cypress Jeff says, kind of a stupid topic, really, but I guess you got to talk about something on the radio. Okay, first off, bleep off with that. Second off, yeah, I saw this online, and it triggered me. I, I just don't understand some of these people that grade so easily. And this is, this is an always thing with me. If you will look at any sort of grade that's given out on a blog or something like that in the offseason, everyone's always scared to give a C or below. A, B for this offseason. Get out of here. You're out of your mind. And we're talking about in a poll with like 3,500 people voting, 92% of people felt like they had a B or an A grade for this offseason. That is insane. 713-780-3776. Lots of people want to weigh in on this. Do the Astros deserve a B or an A for this offseason? Are the Astros 
better after this offseason now that it looks like it's drawn to a close with Michael Brantley aboard and maybe Yuli Gurriel coming back into the fold? I don't even know. Please try to explain it to me. You're going to have a hard time doing it, though. This is way too generous of a grading. Yeah, we're talking about grades. We're talking about report cards for the Astros this offseason. I just think an A or a B are completely bleeping bonkers. Is that hyperbolistic? I suppose it could be, but I feel like an A or a B means someone was exceptional. A C means you did what you were supposed to do. Ds get degrees, but it leaves a lot to be desired, and an F is a fail. Not saying it's a D and not saying it's an F. I'm just saying they did the satisfactory job. That's it. Bringing Verlander back, given your pitching depth, wouldn't have made a lot of sense at the money that he just got from the Mets, right? Maybe some of those contracts out there or Wilson Contreras was out of your price range or an Andrew Benintendi or something like that. But can we can we be objective here? Is it that hard? And again, I'll ask, like, what kind of school did you go to where a A or a B is satisfactory? Like, it's supposed to be special. Yeah, I'm being a cake eater right now. Don't care. Okay. This is how I got into this position. Going to all those elite schools on the Northeast Coast. And in Florida, too. I actually did go to a school in Florida. So you could probably look at me and say, well, Paul, you went to a school in Florida. Are you sure you can read? And I would understand that little jab at the Shorecrest Preparatory School uh, Chargers. Yeah, maybe. But I'm just saying, like, give harder grades. They got a C. They should get a C. And anything above that, I, I think, is bonkers. Really, bonkers. I'll say it again. B O N. K-E-R-S. I spelled it right because I always got A-minuses. There you go. I was really hoping you were going to say that. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, from Ocho Texto, our guy, and a couple of people brought up similar points. Justin Verlander's regular season ex- success was important because he saved the bullpen by giving the team seven-plus innings regularly. Six innings a lot, too, though. Uh, the only other starter to do that was Framber. Without JV, you're likely to lean on the bullpen more next season unless one of the others steps up his innings per game. I agree. And Waka Flock says, biggest concern losing Verlander is the innings he ate up. Bullpen will be taxed by starters, only going five and two-thirds. It was healthy because it wasn't used that much. Not having burnt-out relievers was a huge part of the success. Some other comments, these people are agreeing with me. Astros offseason is a C. I expected more to get stronger. I can't agree with an A or B rating. If they picked up another name in the rotation, maybe. I don't think they needed to, by the way. Like, you're you're allowing more from Garcia, from Urquidy, and you're hoping Hunter Brown steps up. But no, they didn't. Agreed C at best. A equals got better. B equals stayed the same. C equals got worse. D, F equals WTF happened. I I don't think B staying the same. I I, I feel like B, you're adding something. And I, I feel like C should be maintaining. Now, I don't know, maybe if we're in another market and we're used to, like, the, you know, if it's the Miami Marlins or something like that, okay. Yeah, a B for staying the same. Hell, an A for staying the same. You know? like We didn't trade our best player. Right, you didn't sell the whole team after winning the World Series, which they've done twice. It is a BS that they have two World Series. They, the Marlins have as many World Series as the Astros. And they've been good for, what, like three years in their history? It is insane. They've made the, they've made the playoffs. Twice, both times they won the World Series. They've only made it twice total. No, they made the World Series, or they made the playoffs in 2020. In oh, in the expansion yes. year. Oh my God, that is ridiculous. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six to call it to text it to Thomas has been waiting on hold on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. What's up, Thomas? Hey, Paul. Well, disclaimer. I mean, I mean, you know, Houston fans. We've, we've, we've historically when our teams are good, we had to fight the national media. So that I think we have the little the short drunk dude syndrome right now. Um, and so we want to protect our, our, you know, these A's and B's. But the <laughs> truth is going into the off season, we needed, we, I mean, it was helpful to get JV, but the important thing was getting some sort of combination of hitting catcher DH or a uh, left fielder to spell uh, uh, Jordan. Yes. And look, we haven't done that. Yes. We, uh, look, Jorge Abreu is yes. Jose Abreu is yes. That is good. But then what happened to Contreras? What happened to, uh, uh, Christian Vasquez, and we're settling for Michael Brantley, who probably won't be ready for the beginning of the season, or will get injured at some point. So I, I agree with you; it's passing. We, you know, solidified the bullpen, 
you know, it's we're not panicking because we do have six starting pitchers. But yes, I agree with you. We we stay, we tread water. We didn't do what we needed to do to, to, to win the offseason. So I agree with you, man. And, and Thomas, the last point you said too, it's it's winning the offseason. This isn't your priority, you know. But I, I think uh, to the first part of Thomas's call, where yeah, we got a lot of people that are wearing Astros colored glasses, and we are a little bit defensive. And you mentioned the national media with all the questions about the sign stealing scandal and all that stuff. All of that is totally fair and granted, but we're talking amongst ourselves right now. We, we are grading by our own rubric. Look at me using big words, showing off that big brain of mine. Hey, did you know that Paul Gallant took a bunch of AP classes in high school? But we're at an AP level here. It is a different standard that we hold ourselves to. This is what happens when you are in front of greatness. The greatness becomes a part of you. And all of a sudden, you become a baseball savant. A, B, eh, no. It's a C, and it's fine. You would like a little more. A C is probably going to get them back to exactly where they were last year. But I, I feel like we could be a little harsher with the grading. That's it. And, and I, I really think that 92% of people saying A or B is bleeping crazy. That is nuts. I, I was surprised. It was like 6% gave him a C. 6? It's not C is not bad. It's not. Like, people look at a C like it's an F these days. No, it's not. A, an A and a B are supposed to be exceptional. D and F is where it's bad. <laughs> that's, that's where you don't want to be. C, I'm not selling people to settle for a C, but a C is not bad. And, and I, I don't get this with grading. Alex has a thought on the Astros, seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Alex, what's up? So, like, I, I can understand him saying no to the A. As far as the B, I really I feel like that's a bit of a stretch to, to take that away from him. you got to take into, take into account that Jose Abreu is four and a half points higher war than Yuli. And as a player that's going to play every day, I'm, I'm assuming he's probably going to play probably like 140 games this season. I feel like that's a little bit more impactful than Justin Verlander. And not to mention, I think a lot of people are not taking into account that this is probably going to be a six-man rotation again. So even if Hunter Brown, let's say he's going to get 25 starts or something like that, if Hunter wins 11 games, 12 games, that's, that's good enough. That's, that's definitely good enough. I agree. And anybody who's talking about what Justin's going to do in the playoffs, it's, it's a moot point. It's neither here. It, it's irrelevant to us now. That doesn't matter. So who cares what he's going to do in the playoffs? I, 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 uh, I'm with you, Alex, because I think the question is about what they'll be this regular season. You know, because the playoffs are kind of random. I mean, there are some teams that made the playoffs last year, specifically in the National League. Like, the, you know, we thought the Dodgers would probably be there at the end of it. They, they weren't there. The Braves, same thing. Yeah, that's that's all that's all very valid points, and not to mention, we don't really know what's going to happen, how everybody's going to react to these uh, new rule changes. Uh, but I I really do think that as as clutch as Yuli has been for us in the past, having a guy that's definitely and honestly he had 132 hits this season. I don't I don't know where the hell they came from. I I don't really remember seeing them. Uh, but having a guy who's going to be able to impact the lineup like Abreu. Will is going to be a really big deal. And um, I don't know, man. This lineup got really long. It really did. If, if they had picked up maybe a legitimate center, center fielder or I don't know. That's really all it is, is I think a position player. I don't think we really lack anything on, on the pitching staff. So that's just my sense. Appreciate the call. phone call, Alex. Good stuff. Look, I, I think to Alex's points about Abreu, I, Abreu conceptually could be awesome. I, I do want to bring this up, though. 36 next month. Turns 36 on the 29th of January. And if you have taken a look and look at his numbers, the power numbers have started to go down. Is that to say that they're gone down forever? I, I don't know. But he's becoming, I, I think, a little bit more of a contact hitter than a masher over the last like season and a half or so. Now maybe, you know, being in the juice box, maybe, maybe that reawakens it, you know? But... I, I think that that's not a guarantee. We all thought Trey Mancini was going to come here into the juice box with that weird park that he was playing with at the Camden Yards, and like he stunk. And, and I'm not saying he's going to be that, but we were all pretty excited about the Mancini trade, weren't we? 
sometimes these moves don't work out the way that you want it to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that's likely with Abreu. I'm just saying there are some reasons to question that deal as well. I think you're in good shape for this coming season. I wonder about the two years afterwards. And I do wonder about that contract. I think the Montero contract was bad. And if we're talking about an overall grade and as far as getting better, I, a C is fine. There's nothing wrong with the C. An A or a B, though, I just, I just don't understand.